Well, hello. I also want to I, I want to introduce the next banjo building clip. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as I was on Wednesday, even though this is Friday, because really, this is Wednesday. I just finished doing a theology study, and now I'm just doing an intro video. So that's the deal. So I was thinking about, you know, this banjo building process, and, and I've made a lot of instruments, and I have a lot of instruments, um, and I play a lot. And what we'll say is, we'll assume that I own and play more than four instruments. And if you know me, that's the joke. Uh, so the other day, my wife, you know, uh, Debbie asked me, well, hey, uh, do you really need another instrument? And apparently, I didn't respond. And she assumes that the reason I didn't respond to her question was that I wasn't listening. Now, I maintain that I assumed it was a rhetorical question and that it was impolite to answer. She's not convinced of that. Who's not listening? Well, in any case, when she said that, I didn't respond and she said, what did I just say? Well, I asked her, what do you think you just said? She repeated herself with the, what I maintain to be a rhetorical question. Do you really need another instrument? I replied to her in, as proof that I was an active listener. That's what I thought you just said. Then she asked the question, I mean, really, how many instruments do you have? And I tried to explain to her that that's the wrong question. Uh, if we're to sh break off and, and thrust off the tyranny of, of quantitative expectations, the real question is, <clears throat> how many instruments don't I have? Because if you think in the scheme of the number of instruments I don't have, the amount I have is a relative, isn't really even measurable. It, it's so minuscule compared to the number of instruments I don't have. And when I responded to her uh, with that answer, she replied, whatever. Now, that's our little code. Whenever Debbie says whatever to something I say, it means, Charles, I love you so much. You're totally awesome. And I just think you're amazing and you're right of course and that's how i take it because that's our little code when she says whatever i'm sure that's what she means and so she was indicating at that point that i should just have fun and continue building the banjo so with that here's the next clip showing the process of building this hybrid mountain banjo out of flooring Lord bless you guys. We'll see you later. Well, hello. So I'm continuing to document the process of this particular banjo build. And one of the things I didn't mention before, one of the reasons I'm using the tiger wood is it was readily available. I, uh, I have a friend who is a mental illness. He's a wood hoarder. And it's my ministry to use up his wood. And so he actually had gotten a hold of a bunch of flooring. And so it was hardwood flooring that I've repurposed to make this instrument. And I hope it will help deliver my friend from his illness. But nonetheless, I'll take advantage of it and, and enjoy all his free wood. So in the process, things are going relatively well. I also realize the reason I don't generally want to document an instrument build is the commitment involved to, well, document the instrument build. And so that's what's going on. And if you're wondering, yes, it's dark out and it's 5.30 in the morning, uh, and that's, that's me. So here we are. So what I've done so far, you can see I've got the fretboard on. I've shaped the neck. Um, I, I wish I'd have done a time-lapse uh, video of me carving the neck. I didn't. But 
I carved it with a draw knife and a couple other knives as I often do. And so I've shaped a headstock and I've glued the fretboard on now so you can see that and it's over the truss rod that I had shown earlier. And um, I fastened the plywood. You can see the plywood and I've, I've um, put the veneer on the outside. I have not yet stained it. Um, and then I've glued some blocks on here which are attached and I'll shape that. Um, and uh, that's the process. And, and then I'll create a trim for here and, and just try to make things pretty as I go. Um, obviously this isn't the finished product. The uh, rim, as I showed before, fits nicely in there like that. So we're going to get a banjo out of this thing yet. And I made a back, as you'll recall, um, a back has to go on to this to push the banjo rim against the skin. Um, that's how the mountain banjo works and so rather than using tension hooks. So um, tiger wood, I think the middle is, is a type of cherry. The tiger wood came uh, again from the flooring. I think this, this piece is from a dismantled organ <laughs> and, and then I cut the Celtic cross into it just um, for aesthetics and it goes on the back like this and it will fasten on and push on that rim so that the rim can fit in like that and then the natural goat skin will will go over it to, um, looking at it here I think boy it would almost been nice to put a clear skin on it which I did on the six string banjo but I'm I'm opting for the sound I get out of the natural goat skin so um, that's really how that works so that's where we're going um, and I did uh, play around with some stain uh, so here's the difference I've this is the natural uh, veneer and this is stained with a red mahogany stain and that kind of matches the tiger wood I I'm leaning this direction and what I'll do next is I'll shellac these two samples to really compare them to um, to what I want to do but I kind of like that uh, against the tiger wood versus the natural because as I said I'm opting for a darker tone so you can kind of see what I'm talking about so that's where we're headed and I hope you're enjoying this process uh, I enjoy building them I'm not so sure how much fun it is documenting it but I'm doing it nonetheless <laughs>